As we close out Women's History Month, it's my pleasure to welcome a woman who's made history several times in the United States Army. Her most recent achievement was being named the first female commander of the TACOM Life Cycle Management Center at the Detroit Arsenal. Uh, her nomination for the post was approved by President Obama and by Congress. I'm pleased to welcome Major General Gwendolyn Bingham to American Black Journal. Thank you so much. It's yeah. my pleasure to be here, Stephen. Thank you. So explain first what this uh, what this new post means. I'm not sure people well, even know what TACOM well, is. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for that. TACOM is Tank Automotive and Armaments Life up Cycle Management. Macomb Management County, Command Macomb right? County yeah. just up the road. And uh, we are your Army's uh, only active duty component uh, organization that's here. We are headquartered there, and we have there in that our headquarters about 7,500 men and women between military and civilians. Yeah. If you look at us as a life cycle management command, we have about 19,000 men and women who make up our life cycle management command in about 100 different locations yeah. around the world. So very pleased to be a great uh, partner. And in the our first community. female to, to command that uh, I am. station. A very important yeah. part of. Macomb County's economy, too. I know uh, having that there is a big deal to us here uh, in well, Michigan. Well, we uh, just this last year, we awarded about $6.3 billion. Right. Uh, one and a half billion of those were awarded right here in the state of Michigan. Yeah. And so we are uh, very proud every day to be a good partner and teammate and, uh, and also to be able to contribute to the economy yeah. of Michigan. Uh, as I said in the intro there, uh, this is one in a number of firsts uh, that you have experienced as part of the Army. Talk about some of those. All right. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I'm just humbled. <laughs> I, I, my roots begin in Troy, Alabama. I was the daughter of a, a military man and his bride of almost 56 years. and. Um, I've been able to uh, be in the Army now just over 34 and a half years, but when I started out, I really came in for four years and not a day longer. Now you want to do and your so term? And my thought was uh, I was on an Army ROTC <laughs> four-year scholarship yeah. and said, okay, I'll give it a whirl. And uh, as it was, I literally fell in love not only with the man I married, met and married almost 33 <laughs> years ago, uh, but I fell in love with this vocation called the U.S. Army, and it's been uh, wonderful ever since. It's and been a great journey. What is it about uh, the Army or being in the Army that's, uh, that's got you so... Uh, I'm, that's a great question. Yeah. I, uh, I consider myself a people person, and so for all of those assignments that I've had the privilege to be uh, uh, a, a member of a team of, I, it is the people that I resonate with the most. And so when we talk about the magnanimous missions that our Army does and our military around the globe, that can't happen without people. Yeah. And so I've enjoyed being able to team with others, to be able to build relationships, and to be able to partner to accomplish our missions. Yeah, uh, It is unusual these days uh, to see career Army uh, service people, correct? I mean, it's it's not it's not as common no. as it used to be, or is that no, not true? No, it's uh, my father. Yeah. Uh, well, my father right. was an Army uh, <laughs> yeah. NCO of over 20 years himself. Uh -huh. His twin brother was in the Army over 20 years. Uh, so not uncommon at all. Um, the numbers are small. If you look at us as a nation, uh -huh. the number that uh -huh. ser have served in the military, um, but I think many, we are an all-volunteer force, sure. and that's a good news story. So the men and women who raise their right hand and swear that oath of allegiance, yeah. they come in knowing that uh, they may be put in harm's way, but they're willing to do that. And many times we have folks that make the Army a career. After all, that's what happened to me. Right. Um, and talk about that point where you, where you figured... Uh, this is what I want to do the rest of, um, of, of my <laughs> career. As you said, it was initially right. a four-year stint. Right. What, at what point did you say, I'm, I'm just going to stay forever? Well, that's a great question. And so when I met and married my husband, he too was a lieutenant. He was an air defender. And so we stayed uh, kind of dual um, ranked together, lieutenant and captain, for first ten and a half years or so. And he decided to get out and go into education. And I was just having literally so much fun. I said, well, you know, one of us needs to stay in and make a, you know, a, a, a career out of it. Uh -huh. So it became me. And uh, at 20 year mark, I thought, okay, you could retire, but I was still having so much fun and learning my craft, uh, meeting so many uh, great teammates and learning so much about what the Army does, both at the tactical level and throughout the strategic level. And so, uh, I'm no kidding. It has just been a remarkable journey, and all of the people who I've had the privilege uh, to team with have made it so. Yeah. Uh, 
you, you said that you started in ROTC. Uh, Correct. Was that in college or? In high school. In high school. Actually, I was three years in high school and then on the four-year Army ROTC yeah. in college. And, and what do you say to young people uh, about that opportunity uh, as young as high school? It's a great uh, question. And uh, ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Course, gives you such a fundamental basis or foundation for learning leadership. Mm -hmm. You learn leadership, working uh, teamwork with other uh, cadets, and uh, you're exposed to a number of broadening opportunities even within um, high school. And so if you kick that up a notch and you uh, look at it from a college perspective, one of the great beauties about ROTC and one of the things that uh, sold me on it was I was looking for a way to pay for my college yeah. education <laughs> so I could be not so close to home. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, the Reserve Officer Training Corps scholarship was a way to do that and I was blessed to be able to uh, receive that. But any other student can apply for that yeah. uh, without obligation. You can take leadership courses in ROTC for uh -huh. a couple of years before you must uh, obligate yourself at the third year mark. Yeah, yeah. So I would tell anyone to really consider it, but my one advice to all of our young people is to never say never. Right. Because you just might fool yourself and stay in as long as I have. Right. And, and it really is a sort of world of possibility. World of uh, possibilities, being, uh, correct. Of the military. Um, uh, talk about the posts that you've had uh, that you that you liked the most or that you remember the most uh, over your career? You know, people have asked me, what's your favorite <laughs> tour? And every time I go to, to one place, I say, boy, that was my best tour. And then I go to another <laughs> one and say, boy, school. that was even better than the last one. You know, uh, they all have been special to me. I take a little bit of all of where I've been because that has helped shape and mold my thinking and whom I am as a person. And, uh, you know, when I leave this post eventually here, I will take a little bit of Detroit with me yeah. uh, because you learn so many things. Uh, this post uh, being a the confluence of acquisition, logistics, and technology at TACOM, um, I've just learned so much about the depth and breadth of dealing with our partnering entities, academia, uh, industry, and uh, it's just our supply chain managers, it's been yeah. phenomenal. I mean, it really is integrated into so it many is. different parts it of, is. of the state. It, it really is, and a lot of people don't know about yeah, uh, know. even TACOM. Yeah. Uh, we're subordinate headquarters of the Army Materiel Command. My boss is uh, four-star general, General Dennis Vi. And uh, we basically were stood up here 75 years ago. So, Steve and I will tell you I'm excited because this is our 75th year. And, and as we say in the Army, we're still rolling along right. and uh, doing some magnanimous work for our nation. And it's our privilege to do so. Yeah. Uh, have, have any of your assignments been in uh, conflict zones? And how was that different from the great, other ones? Great question. Um, I was assigned with the 1st Theater Sustainment Command at Fort Bragg uh, in 2010 uh -huh. and deployed over to uh, Kuwait and uh, a few months into Afghanistan mm -hmm. during Operation I Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. And I can just tell you, having been there during that tour and been back over there, uh, our men and women uh, are in harm's way. They do a phenomenal job yeah. for our nation. And I'm so pleased to be able to thank them publicly and every chance I get for the world they do in a multi, uh, multi-functional capabilities and in, in oper occupations. Yeah. So um, it's humbling. Yeah. And so. Uh, I mean, I think it's one thing uh, you want to make clear to to people is that's not the the full breadth of military service is, is mm -hmm. that sort of duty. I mean, you've done a lot of different things. Co correct. And. Um, I, I think that's also uh, goes in line with us being an all volunteer force. Sure. Uh, I had the good privilege last year to act actually administer the oath of enlistment to high school students that were going in all of the services there. And um, it's uh, they raised their right hand and swear that oath full in full knowledge that they could be deployed in harm's way. But there are all other locations around the globe in Europe, uh, Korea, the Pacific, and in the continental United States. Sure. And uh, just being able to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves and ourselves as individuals is very gratifying and fulfilling. Yeah. And so we do that uh, in full measure uh, and very proud to be a part of our nation's missions. All right. So quickly, we've got about 30 seconds left. What do you think your next assignment might be? 
Well, <laughs> there's rumors out there. I, I can tell you I'm sending my household goods to D.C. Yeah, okay. I don't know what okay. my next job will be exactly, <laughs> but I can just assure myself and you that uh, if it's been as good as it's been for 34 and a half yeah. years, I'm going to love it. Okay. And so no reason for me not to, look at, uh, to be excited yeah. about it. Okay. General Bingham, thank you for being here. Thank you.